Hey everybody, this is Brian with Brian Lane Designs. First of all, I wanna say thank you so much for joining me uh, in with this tutorial today. Uh, I hope it can help you and inspire you to make your own fall wreath for the upcoming fall season. Um, so first of all, I am starting this uh, by making my bow. I am using a one and a half inch um, burlap ribbon for this. And of course I'm using my bow maker because it really hurts my hands now to make a bow by hand. So it's much easier for me to use the bow maker. And in this particular uh, video, I am using the four in one bow maker uh, from Probo The Hand. And if you want to get that, you can get that from probothehand.com or you can also order it. Um, you can go to my link. Well, you can go to my link tree and you can order it from uh, my Amazon storefront and I will put the um, the um, the URL for that in the comment section or actually with this being YouTube I can put it on in the, the in the description so it will be in the description uh, I forget I'm so used to using Facebook and now that I'm on YouTube it's a little different so anyway as you can see here, I am making my loops, the first two loops that I made. Actually, it'll be the first four loops that I made. I did those about uh, seven and a half inches uh, long. So the first four loops would be seven and a half inches. Um, and then as I went to my next loops, I just started making those just about a half an inch smaller. So I went from seven and a half down to seven, and then from seven down to six and a half, and then from six and a half to six. And I think I made, um, I think maybe seven loops, or seven or eight loops on this video, I'm not sure, but I think I ended up using maybe seven. So we'll just let the video play and see. Also, uh, I wanted to point out, as you can see, the way that I'm making this particular bow is um, I am just pinching and twisting. Like right here, you can see I bring it over, I lay it down in the, the groove, and then I pinch it and I twist it and push it down. By doing that, it's going to ensure that the, uh, the side that you want to see is going to be the side that's shown. So just remember each time you bring it over to either side, you want to pinch and then twist it. Um, so yeah, it looks like I ended up using eight loops on this. And my tails I made about, I think 18 inches long. And you can also see that I use a zip tie. I use two zip ties to, uh, to tie my bow off. Uh, I use one zip tie to close it off and then I use one zip tie that I put through and I will use that particular zip tie in the back to attach it to my wreath. Um, you don't have to use a zip tie. You can use Chanel stems. Some people call them pipe cleaners. You can use, um, uh, I would re I recommend a 26 gauge wire. You can use that. Um, but um, I like on thicker ribbon to use the zip tie. And as you can see right here, I cut my ribbon. The, the, the tail that was coming on the top there, I cut that off so I could put it on the bottom. So I'm just taking that, that tail there and I'm just putting it in the bottom so it will stay on the bottom. Because whenever you are making a bow with a bow maker, your last ribbon, I mean, well, your last tail will end up being on the top. And I, um, it's a personal preference of mine to just take that and put the tail in the back. I think it hangs better and I think it ends up being a, making a prettier bow. And when you are making your bow, it's good to not tie your zip tie 
as tight as you want it so it can give you uh, a little room to maneuver your loops and to fluff your bow. Um, but uh, I go ahead and just tie it off because I know pretty much I've done this enough that I know pretty much what it's going to do and I can just fluff it on the on the wreath itself. So, but if you um, are more comfortable leaving it a little looser and fluffing your bow before you tighten it up with the zip tie, then you can do that. And right here, I'm just taking my zip tie and sticking it through the frame. And I'm just gonna um, close that off on the grapevine. And then we will fluff it out. Okay, we are finishing up on the bow, and there you can see uh, you have a really pretty, uh, very nice shaped bow. I myself uh, love the burlap, and like I said, this is a one and a half inch burlap, and it makes a beautiful bow, especially for fall. I love burlap because you can use it all seasons, um, but I love it in the fall especially. Okay, so the next thing that I am going to do is I'm going to start inserting my uh, base for my wreath, which this particular uh, wreath, I use a, a stem called Yarrow. Uh, I typically have this in stock, but it is sold out. I'm trying to get it back in. Uh, it's a really, really popular stem in my store. Um... But yeah, I'm cutting this into three sections. And man, I tell you, those stickers, I hate the stickers that come on these things. Um, but anyway, as you can see, I'm cutting this into three sections. And this wreath is a really, really uh, nice beginner's wreath. If you are a beginner, this would be a really nice wreath to start with. Uh, something like this, because there's not a whole lot uh, in it and um, but still it makes a really beautiful wreath uh, so what you want to do is always make sure that you open up and fill out your uh, your picks uh, to make them more lifelike when they come in the box they're usually very flat and out of shape so by opening them up it gives them life and makes them look a lot more natural so I just dipped the stem into the glue and I'm putting this in on the top right behind the bow. And uh, that's gonna help the bow stay um, uh, fluffed out at the top. And, um, and it's also going, when it's finished, it's gonna look like the bow is kinda incorporated in with the wreath, not just put in there. Um, it's going to blend in. And this piece, I am just, um, as you can see, uh, there's glue there. I have a glue pot and I'm just dipping the bottom of the stem in the glue and I'm just sticking it up in again behind the bottom of the, of the bow here. And we're going to fluff it out. And um, 
I mean, you can already see at what a, um, a difference it's made. I mean, it's already beautiful. <clears throat> okay, we're taking the last piece of that particular stem. And again, we're just fluffing it out. And we're going to... Um, tear a piece of that off uh, to make it um, to give us two pieces off of that cut and I'm just going to I think I'm adding that at the top when I add that at the top yeah so I will put that at the top just to fill that in a little more I didn't want to use a whole piece because it would have been too much so I just took a little bit off of that one and added at the top and we're going to take this one and add it at the bottom just make sure that you your stems aren't too long as you can see there I'm just shortening the stem so there's not too much stuck in the wreath because sometimes they will come through the back so yeah right here uh, yeah we're putting this one on the side it's always important remember whenever you are uh, designing a wreath to make sure that you fill up behind the bow also on the side so many times I see people and they don't put anything on the side behind their bow and that's okay if that's something that you like but um myself i think it just gives it a nicer finish if you just kind of fill it out all the way around and it gives it a more natural look also and here i'm just taking the last stem and we're going to do the same thing with this one we're going to cut this into three pieces and just incorporate it in to the wreath. We're going to add some at the bottom um, and then a little bit more at the top. I'm sure you guys can see that glue string here just a minute whenever I dip this <clears throat> on. There it is. I use Gorilla Glue. It is the it is my choice of glue. In my opinion, it's the best glue that you can get um, for crafts or um, use making wreaths or arrangements. I love it, but um, it's just like any other glue. You're going to get glue strings. So, just you can always use a blow dryer and hold over your um, your wreath, and it will melt those off. So there, you can see how beautiful it looks, just like that. And if you wanted to stop at this point and sell the wreath like this, or use it for yourself at your home, you could do that. It's a beautiful wreath, just like that. Um, there's different stopping points that you can. Uh, choose to stop at and make your wreath as you know inexpensive as you want or you can make it you know as elaborate as you would like but we are going to continue on and add in some more items and we're only going to use one bush of this particular wheat it's some type of a wheat grass and um so we're going to use this one 
bush and incorporate that throughout the wreath. Uh, just like we did the yarrow. We're just filling in spaces that we see that we could would like something else. So just fill this in throughout the whole wreath. Well, the re the part that you're working on, not the whole wreath, because you can see this is not a whole wreath finished. So I'm also using, I guess I should mention that I'm using a uh, an oval. I think this is a 16 inch oval uh, frame that I'm using, grapevine. So anyway, just as you can see here, just go ahead and fill out the rest of your wreath with your wheatgrass or whatever you are wanting to use in your wreath. Okay, the last um, thing that I'm going to be adding into this wreath is I have two uh, berry uh, berry picks. So I'm just going to take this whole uh, pick and um, 
I'm going to cut off the um, the stems and start inserting them in where I want them. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to add in, which is the last, um, uh, the last um, item, I guess you can say that we're going to add to this wreath, is I had decided to add in some pheasant feathers. Uh, this is something that I just decided to do last minute. Um, I particularly like it better without them. Uh, I have another wreath that I made exactly like this one that I use. Uh, that I made and I did not put them in and I like it better honestly, but some people really like feathers and so I decided to add uh, To make one with feathers. 
So as you can see, um, I just ran my scissors down the back of the the stem of the the the, um, the feather, and it just gave it a little curve. And uh, so that's a little trick that you can do. Um, so I ended up putting three down at the bottom, and I put three at the top. And as you can see here, I'm just running my scissors down the feather, and it just gives it a bend, like a curve. Um, and you do it whichever curve, whichever way you want your uh, feathers to go as to which way you will move your scissors and run down the feather because one way will give it a curve to the right and one way will give it a curve to the left. I did end up taking this feather out and redistributing it. It was, or I'm sorry, reinserting it because it did end up sticking out too much when I was finished. And so I decided to take it out and uh, reinsert it to make it lay a little flatter. Okay, as we're finishing up here, I would like to say um, thank you again so much for um, watching this video. And I hope you will consider to subscribe to my channel and also be a follower on my Facebook page at brianleedesigns.com. And if you would like to shop for any of the items that you see, some items I will have, some I will not. It just depends on what will sell out. Um, my website is brianlanedesigns.com and you can go there and shop. You can also download the app from the Apple Place, uh, from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. So, um, and I also have live sales every Friday night at 6.30 Central Time right on my Facebook page on Brian Lane Designs. Okay, as you can see, we are finished up here, and uh, like I said, some people are going to love the feathers, some are going to hate them. Uh, I think it turned out pretty on this wreath, so either way, it's going to make a pretty wreath. Again, thank you so much for watching, and have a great evening.